Hello everybody, it's James Mansfield here, I guess, just James. We are going to be doing some sewing today because I have, what, some projects to finish before my brunch debut again. So, this time we are doing a big top theme, like under the big top is the theme for Senor Frog's drag brunch. And wouldn't you know it, I have some costumes to finish for that because I don't have anything that's circus themed. So, I'm gonna be creating here my outfit for the opening number. So if you're interested in like how drag queens create outfits and sewing and little tricks and tips that you can do to like reuse some costumes you may already have, now's your chance. Hey everybody, how are we doing? I'm looking over the chat right now. How is everyone going? Hey everyone over at Twitch, don't be shy, be sure and talk. Hello T-Boy, hello Paco, hello Carl, hey Carl. Did you finish Ernie's intro yet? <laughs> yes, hi Chameleon, hello everybody. Yeah, at the moment I am currently picking away the seam at one of my sleeves. You may recognize this dress, and you probably don't. I actually wore this dress in a photo shoot with the red M&Ms. It is very big for me now, so I'm not wearing it anymore. But it is gonna work for this because I'm doing sort of like a jester theme. Let me show you guys quick. Pull up my sketch that I have made here. This is the idea, so you can see in the above camera. I'm doing this one right here. It's gonna be a little like bodysuit with some like, you know, brunchy kind of sleeves inspired by the Barbie masquerade outfit, the famous one from the 60s. I wanted to make this, but I didn't have time to draft the pattern. Plus, I don't wanna source that much fabric. I wanna use what I already have. So we're gonna do what we can do here and probably make this down the line because we're gonna be doing this big top theme quite a bit. So let's keep it moving. In the meantime, how are we doing tonight? How is everybody? Almost done picking the seam out of this sleeve and we can just start getting ready to sew. Because I need to use this sleeve as a pattern. Because wouldn't you know it, I misplaced where I put this big ass sleeve. It was one of those like 1920s style like Gideon girl, Gibson girl kind of like sleeves. But it works really well for like character sleeves. All right, here we go, we're almost there. I'm the fastest seam ripper in the West. In the meantime, while I do this, let me look at the comment section. Oh my God, did James Manso just say hi to me? I sure the hell did. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Wait, will it have a mask like a Harlequin? Um, probably not because another girl on our show is doing a more of a Harlequin jester kind of look. So this one's more like a clown. You know, I, I dabble in comedy, so why not be a clown? <laughs> I actually have a great clown outfit. It just doesn't work for the color scheme because that's also one thing about this brunch is our opening numbers are a specific color scheme. So I wanna make sure I abode by that. And I'm not the one that looks like the odd girl. I like, oh look, she didn't get the memo. <laughs> Cause that would happen to me. And if I can do something where I don't have to like spend money or hire a designer, I'm gonna do it, honey. So I'm sacrificing this dress because it no longer fits me. There we are. But yeah, let me tell you, it is such a brunch sleeve. Like look at that puff. It's like a Morgan McMichael sleeve. She loves her one of these like, what would you even call this? Like these dynasty style sleeves? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't really usually make stuff like this, but for something like this, I feel like it's gonna work for a clown, you know? I feel like it's a good look. And we're gonna use the rest of this for the costume. All right. And also had a peplum that I since ripped off before the live stream. All right, now I pre-cut a few things. So I have here the back pieces for one side. We're gonna do neoprene for the other one because I need as much stretch as possible. So we're basically treating this like we're making swimwear. <laughs> and this I could use a pattern for this. Great, all right, let's get going, shall we? Now, those of you that actually sew are gonna look at me like, what in the world is she doing? But again, when you don't have a lot of fabric to work with, you don't feel like buying anything new. Anything works. I forgot to turn the pink light in the back. Oh no! Oh. The show is ruined! <laughs> a rare instance where you get to see Ernie. Oh my gosh, look at Ernie. A wild Ernie appeared. All right. That's and that's. That's gonna look good. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll look good. All right, let's start doing this. Hopefully I don't confuse myself. All right, so I flip that over. All right. This is what we call being cheap and recycling things. Upcycling, I guess, not recycling. We're repurposing is what we're doing. 
How many of y'all do this? If you do drag and you make costumes, do you, like, sacrifice or, like, if you have dead costumes, you just use them for something else? Because that's what I always do. Like, all my looks from Drag Race, for, like, the first time around, I, like, Frankenstein a lot of stuff out of those. Like, my white party I got eliminated in, I totally upcycled that into, like, a nurse outfit for a Halloween show. It was like, it's got a bad memory attached to it. I'm not holding on to it. It's not worth keeping. Then a lot of this stuff was made out of such cheap fabrics that I really don't care. How's that gonna look? I think it's gonna be really fun side by side. Yeah, that'll work. Like it's gonna be on a, it's gonna be on a brunch stage. I'll add stones to that side so it's not so so plain. What I like about drag stuff is like the fabrics can be completely different and it's just fine. <laughs> All the rules of costuming go out the window. So that's our back piece. This is our front side panel. We gotta do our side panel now for the other fabric. So we lay it that way. Those are here so I don't get confused. All right. Hopefully I have enough fabric left to make the front too. So we'll see. <laughs> Otherwise it may end up just being a black panty. I have completely prepared myself for not having enough fabric. Kind of a shysty cut, but it's okay. We've seen alone. All right, so that's that. Let's do our front panel, shall we? Okay, panel front. Let me look at my stuff. Choo -choo, titty, back panels, side panel. Ah, panel front. That's so, if I'm not mistaken. I always have to do this. I have to lay the pattern out to make sure I remember how it all goes. So, boop, boop, boop. Yes, that's how that goes. Yes, I remember. I remember, okay. Oh no, isn't there another piece? There's another piece. There is, there's certainly another piece. I know I'm not crazy. Let me see, let me see. That's a skirt, that's a skirt. That's the boob covering, that's another tit. Yeah, I feel like there's another piece. What am I forgetting here? Do you start to laugh without having all your pizzas? <laughs> there is a very strong possibility that that did happen. That's okay. Well, there's stuff underneath the table. Is there? Okay. Yeah, that's that, and that's that, and that's that part. Let's see. Well, wouldn't you know the one... Oh, here's a dress I made with the same pattern. I'm pretty sure there's a part that I'm missing. Yes, there is. I'm missing this piece right here. Be right back. <laughs> I'm in the process of figuring out where the hell that pattern piece went, which is fine. Like if I can't find it, I go and just make another one. So, oh yeah. Boy, let's see. In the meantime, how many times has this happened to y'all? <laughs> you think you're ready to go and then suddenly one key part of your stuff is missing. Ugh. And again, y'all know me. It wouldn't be a James Mansfield live stream unless something's gone wrong. All right, so. I can't wear this dress anymore, so we'll just take the piece out of here. All right, we're working around it. So, I need to make this piece right here. La la la, la 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 la. Yeah, wouldn't you know, I'm missing one vital piece. That's so annoying. Okay. Okay. Yes, crafting time. In the meantime, how's everyone's like day going? I had to work on taxes today, so I'm trying to do something to take my mind off of that right now. <laughs> I can think of anything else but that. <sighs> Isn't that fun when the pattern runs away? <laughs> Almost every project does that for me. Girl, I'm telling you. Here's the thing, like, I have to start just making duplicates of this, because, like, my my gay daughter Justin made this for me, and I use it constantly. So, like, I'm just used to it always being there, and now I've done this new thing where I've been trying to pick up after myself, which is, like, never do that. Never start doing that. Just, just be messy. 
because the organ it's organized chaos. And now I put it somewhere and I don't know where it is. So it's all fine. But thankfully, I use this pattern for everything so I could just deconstruct this dress that does not fit me. You know, none will be all the wiser. And look at that, we're almost there. Yeah, this is the solo and spotlight dress, which I tore the zipper out on because I made it too small for me. It turns out I'm still learning how to work with non-stretch fabric. As you know, we all have our own struggles we're getting through. That's mine. I have to always use stretch fabric for everything. Which like fastest seam ripper in the West. Almost got the piece out. Oh, that's just fun, in case you wonder how I do stuff. The inside of a drag queen's dress is always the most frightening thing in the world. Like, this is how I do mine. You can see how it was way too tight for me because, the, like, it, <laughs> the lining is starting to tear, like, the interfacing from, like, being pulled too much. Yeah, that happens. Also, this is why you should line your dresses so people don't see that. But, yeah, I stuff my breasts like that. And it works for me. I don't have to, like, wear a bra. Same, I learn on stretch, everyone has to think, yeah, oh my god, stretch fabric is a godsend, I'm telling you, like, I try to work exclusively in that, just because, like, I, I think it's always the skirt, the skirt's what gets me. I found this with some random ass things at the bottom. Let me see. It might be in there, because I probably took it to Justin's house to, like, work on stuff. Let's see, there's that, there's that. That is one, I need two. There's two in here. Oh, I have more receipts for taxes. Let me write those off. Whoosh. Do that one done. That's what I need. We found her. And I destroyed this dress for no reason. Well, now I have a reason to make something else now. <laughs> Look at that. Solving problems in real time. Where was it? And that pink, like, outside of that pink bag. Really? They're literally right next to it. See, this is why you don't organize, because you'll never remember where you put anything. Don't organize. That's the lesson to take away from the slide. <laughs> <laughs> I would be embarrassed, but who's got time for that? All right, I'm living my life here, all right? I'm sewing on live and entertaining you people. I didn't even know what I was looking for. I was like, this looks like it. I am so proud of you for figuring it out, though, because, like, if, I don't even know how to explain it to you. <laughs> It's like, it's just like, it's the side part of my tit. <laughs> but now I'm very, very happy. Okay, so let's do all this fashion fabric first. Let's get this girly cut out. We have to do that, because that's the titty right there. That's the side we need. Okay, so we're gonna focus on that first and try and make sure I cut everything out right because this is the fabric that I don't have that much of, so it has to go right. Ugh, this outfit, I don't know why, I just did not like it. <laughs> it was so ugly. <laughs> okay. Front side. How did that happen? I got a rip right here? That's crazy. That is so crazy, okay. Doot, 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 doot. Senpai on Switch wants to know, what piece that you've made makes you the proudest? Um, probably the Calgar one that I'm actually going to use for this. Um, it's the one of me with the, um, my friend Kurt, where he's all tied up in that cowgirl outfit. I actually made an outfit that matches it for him too. That's my favorite one so far, because that was like a shoot I actually wanted to do for a while. Like, I envisioned it, I planned it out, and it came out really cute. And, like, I had a help, I had a um, part in designing the fabric and everything. It's actually right here. The fabric I have is right here. I, my friend Jonathan made it, but it was my idea for the design. It's like little cowboys with JM with the rope and everything. Like, playing into all sorts of fun stuff. I also like the stuff that's, like, subliminally dirty. That's, like, a really fun thing to do with drag. It's very John Waters. Okay. 
But that one I'm probably most proud of. Otherwise, like, I'm always proud whenever I make anything. Generally, a lot of the clothes I wear on YouTube are all stuff that I've made. Like, I pride myself on being a Drake queen that actually makes stuff. Also, I'm cheap, so that also plays a big part into it as well. Like, if I have to spend over $400 for something, it's not worth it. I'm going to make it myself. Like, I can't, like, responsibly, like, explain that to myself as to why I needed that, if that makes any sense. It's like, girl, $400? I'll miss that. Like, especially here in Las Vegas, that's our, like, gas bill now. <laughs> our gas bills here are outrageous right now. They, they're actually like, protesting the gas company here. It is nuts. And, like, I even noticed it, too, with mine. Like, because I generally like my house cold anyway. But when I had it on, it's like I looked at my bills like, what in the hell? Like, girl, you'd have thought I was like running a kitchen or something in here. All right, let's see. That side's done. So that's good. Now we gotta do the titty for this side. Titties! Titties are fun, okay. Again, this is the horse hair that I sewed into the peplum. Not the best job, but again, like it was my first time working with horse hair, so don't judge me. James, just to let you know, I'm a huge fan of your artsy and you are extremely talented. Oh, thank you, Bishop. I appreciate that. And it looks like I'm squinting because I can't see. It's absolutely true. Even though this is like literally four feet away from me, I need glasses in the worst way. Hey, honeybee. Good to see you. Hey, Pod Save the Queen. Hello, my Twitch subbies. <laughs> what happened with honeybee? Did I miss it? Oh, she's, she's on a weight loss journey. She lost some weight, so she needs to sew off it. Congratulations. Yes. That's awesome. I mean, not to make this about me, but it's also my channel, so that's what I, that's kind of what I'm good at. I'm also on a fitness journey. I went to the gym for like 40 minutes today, so just saying. <laughs> Kidding. That's awesome, honeybee. I'm happy to hear that. I wish you the best of luck with it, because it ain't easy. Century Compass also no. Is there an item that's cursed? Oh wait, I lost out the comment. Okay. I won't. <laughs> she'll come. She'll come to <laughs> it again. She's good at it like that. If she wants it asked, she'll have it answered. <laughs> She's not one to not comment it again. Oh, I missed a lot of chats. Wow. It's okay. You were, you were saving the day finding that piece, okay? Like, we didn't expect that to happen, but again, it just adds a level of, what am I thinking here? What's the word I'm looking for? Unpredictability, you know? Unpredictable is what we are. Micah Sailor Moon said, my fitness journey is not baking a cake and eating it today. Good for you. I had that problem a while back when I was doing the cooking videos for Domestic Goddess. And like, I was seeing a trainer and everything, and he's just like, what the fuck? You made a cake again? It's like, I'm... I swear it was for work. <laughs> and I'd lie and say I didn't eat it. Oh my god, like that Dolly Parton cur like turtle brownie. So good. Oh my god. Oh, th that was so good. I should make that again. I wish there was a potluck or something so I had a reason to make it. Bring the bars. Someone asked, y'all pay for gas? Like electric? You pay for gas, electricity, water? Oh, honey, let me tell you, like, our water is no joke here. Like, they will monitor your water usage here in Las Vegas because we're in the middle of a drought. And if you go over, you get fined. So, like, we're always cautious about that. Like, they're saying, like, what, five-minute showers you're supposed to take? That's crazy. Like, it's an adjustment. <laughs> no, we came from West Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where there's Lake Michigan right next to it, to Las Vegas, which is the desert. They have a Lake Mead, which is going, like, below in dangerous levels. They're afraid that it's going to dry out. I mean, with the way nature's going, it is definitely going to dry out. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's unavoidable. And with all the casinos they're building here. Yeah, like they just, they're building like three more. The Fountain Blue finally finished. Ugh. Yeah. Nature talk. I know, it's so interesting. Look at me, I'm so involved. <laughs> okay, I don't need this fabric anymore for now, so I'm gonna put you on the floor. All right, let's get organized here. Oh, this brunch sleeve is so heinous. I hate these sleeves so much. 
Maybe I don't. I kind of like it. Maybe I do like it. I don't know. How do you guys feel about these sleeves? I know, like, every brunch show, a queen will have sleeves like this. Like, the big gigantic ones. Like, they stuff them. <sighs> okay. Senpai said, are you going for it? An opera clown, a birthday party clown, or a Cirque du Soleil clown? I'm going for, when you look at it, you think, oh yeah, that's a clown. That's, that's kind of like <laughs> my approach on this. I would love to say there is more thought put into this process, but it's more or less, hopefully when you look at it, clown registers. So that's, that's the end goal. Because again, it's just for the opening. I'm not going to be doing like particularly very clowny makeup. I might wear a nose. We'll see. I'm not really in until the 17th, so I have lots of time to figure that out and decorate it the way I want to. Okay, so that's one side down. Let's fix the other side. Okay. All right, I'm praying this works out. Because it's my first time doing mismatch, like two different fabrics. So we're gonna see how this works. I'm also using two very different fabric types because it's just what I have. We're using neoprene and confetti dot. So we'll see how it goes. Again, I'll be wearing it for literally a minute. So I'm not too worried about it. No, Century Concepts wants to know, is there an item that's cursed? No matter how much you try to redo it, a blooper happens. Um, an item that's cursed. I'm trying to think. Um, confetti dot usually, which is, I don't know why I picked it, but it's just, it's the most showy fabric around. I learned that if you put like wax paper down before you sew it, it won't gum up your needles. I'm certain I'm gonna have to change the needle quite a bit when I'm sewing on this, so I'm not looking forward to that. Cause yeah, this fabric sucks. Cause of, like the glue that's on the dots, it gums up the needle with adhesive. So that's when always a problem. Like I always end up going through like three or four needles. And my friend Nate that does some of my outfits, like he told me like, you're supposed to just put wax paper down and then you won't have that problem, but I never do. So yeah, I feel like the curse is, is me. I'm the curse. I'm the reason it's me. Okay. All right. That. And then cube. So yeah, now we have to do that. And thankfully neoprene has no pattern, so I can honestly just cut it any old way and it'll work. So that's good. So let's do our neoprene pieces now. All right, neoprene, get over there. I don't need you yet. Well, I guess it's okay, it's okay that I ruined that dress because I was gonna rip the tool off of it anyway so I could use it for the collar. So it's fine, I was gonna destroy it either way. Now I just have more of a reason. I'll probably use it for a doll dress or something. Is there AC at Senior Frogs? Is there AC? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course there is. Yes, there is. It's also a big open patio. So in the summertime, they'll have it open and you can see right onto the strip. It's beautiful. I kind of get distracted when the like, window, when like the patio is open because like I'll be on the main stage and I'll be looking out and I can see like, you know, the whole strip in front of me. <laughs> I'm just distracted. And I get to see like that pirate show that used to be there, but the ship is there. It's distracting. I'll just say that. I get distracted easily. My mind wanders and I forget I'm at work. Okay, let's see what we're doing here. How much of this can I get away with using? Because this is an odd shaped piece. I'm trying to be frugal here. I'm trying to like be smart about this. Well, talking about frugal, SMH, SMH, SMH commented or asked, have you ever gotten swatches because you didn't need that much of a fabric and were cheap, or should I be feeling guilty? Like swatches of fabric? It depends what you're doing. Like if I was making Barbie clothes or something, always get swatches. Like almost the, all the best Barbie clothes I've ever gotten were all made from squat, like swatches. Or if you're like quilting or something, like ain't no shame in that game. Plus fabric is expensive. I keep learning that every time I try and make something new, it's just like, I spent like $80 to 100 on like yards of fabric now. Which is like, girl, at that rate, you might as well just buy a dress. <laughs> like with the modern vintage stuff I buy, like it usually is like around 180 to like 200, like 150, depending on what the dress is. I'm just like, why am I making my own clothes again? <laughs> yeah, again, like ain't no shame in your game. You can get away with using the scraps, do it. I know some of the like most interesting drag costumes I've ever seen are like girls that make their bodysuits out of all their scrap fabric they have from previous costumes. Just like a patchwork bodysuit. Those are super cool. All right, we got a YouTube super chat from Brex516 for $10. Hey James, not a sudden question, but what's your favorite wig slash wigs that you've made? I assume it's blonde. Also, love you. Ah, uh, thank you. What's my favorite wig? 
are wigs. Okay, um, hmm. The roller set wig from the from the Net Gala is one of my favorite ones I ever did. Cause it was just like one of the things that like we threw together that just really worked. Like every piece came together so well. And it like really told a story for like who I am as a queen. I really liked that one. Um, let's see, what other wigs? Um, that wig I wore recently, that's in my promo picture for James Mansfield 2, the Calgary one, that page boy. I loved that wig, like when it was nice and fresh. It's one of the prettiest wigs I've ever done. Um, generally whenever I do like one of my vintage styles really, really well, those are my favorite wigs and I wear them to the ground. But as far as like my construction wigs that I'm most proud of, probably the Net Gala one. Cause that one just really came together and told a story, which I was really happy with. All right, the honeybee wants to know on Twitch, what's the best place to get fabric? I want a shiny, glitzy dress, but like, Jones is totally a mom store here in San Diego. It's all flannel and fleece. Oh God, that's horrible. San Diego, honestly, drive down to Santee Alley if you can. That's probably the best place. To LA? Yeah, San Diego. Like, just make the trip there. Like, plan a pilgrimage to Santee Alley, because everyone shops there. Oh, we drive to Santee Alley. Oh yeah. Totally, like whenever I have a big project, well, me and my friend Justin will like plan a road trip and just go and buy a bunch of fabric. Although I will say recently, there it has been a little bit duddy. Like there's been a lot of duds. I rarely walk back with like a huge haul like I used to. I feel like, you know, the lockdown really took out a lot of those great stores or they're just not buying as much as they used to anymore. But generally if you're in the LA area, or you can get there, Santa is always a good bet. That's where everybody goes. That's why whenever an LA queen does bad on drag race with costumes, it's like, how, how? Every fabric in the world is at your fingertips. <laughs> like, if you're wearing a boring costume. Yeah, that's in LA. A lot of, mm, no, I'm not gonna, no, I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> so then let me hold my tongue on that one. <laughs> Otherwise, if you're in Vegas, we go to Hetty's. That's where you get all of our stuff too, which is honestly like a lot of stuff from LA too. It ends up there. And again, like fabric stores, it's kind of a crapshoot because no matter what, they're always expensive. There was this discount fabric store I went to in Boston that was sickening. I got such a good haul. And like they had a really good, like cheap run of like costume fabrics there that I got. And it's like, I bought an extra suitcase just to take home fabric. It was sickening. Um, just look up Discount Fabric in Boston, you'll find it. But yeah, I found like two-tone sequin, like red and orange goldish on like stretch fabric. And I got it for like $5 a yard. And I bought the whole bolt. I was like, okay, we're doing this. That's what I made the um, two girls from Little Rock costumes with me and Justin in. He made it with that fabric. That's from a fabric shop in Boston. But no, you just gotta look around. Like whenever I'm traveling, I always like Googling fabric stores to see if there's anything. And sometimes you'll get lucky, but most of the time you don't. It's kind of like thrift shopping or vintage shopping. Generally, you have to really find the lucky spot. So this will hold. So I might not need to line these, but that might need some lining. Okay. Okay. Okay, all right, that's got some stretch to it, so we're good. We did everything correct so far. All the give is giving, so that's good. I just had to put some interfacing on the titties and I think we'll be fine. Which means I just have to move this because I've been to mistake a couple times now of like ironing on this and it bubbles up because apparently heat and plastic don't mix. Yeah, didn't know that. I did know that actually, that's science. That's like basic science, but again, I'm not one for making smart decisions. All right, so let's move these ones here. Now that we have everything just about figured out. Let's clean up a little bit so I can get my iron going. I'm trying to iron in here. Oh, you the only thing I found out. These guys, these like clips for like fabric are everything. Um, I got them at Wawak, Waywalk, I think it's what it's called. Just look up sewing materials and something with a W, Wawak, and it's everything. <laughs> Wonder Clips, yes, that's what they're called. They're everything. They sell them on Amazon too, but you can get them on that website for like way cheaper and with a bunch of them. Okay, move that out of the way for now. 
do not judge my table. I dyed hair recently, so <laughs> it's a little dirty, but it's fine. Ugh. We're putting a towel down. Okay, time to iron in here. Okay. <laughs> huh? Mike on YouTube said, "Oh, to have ten thousand dollars and to be let loose in the LA fashion district." Ooh, that's like a dream. <sighs> Let loose. Oh, Lucy. <laughs> oh, Lucy. I should text her and see how she's doing. She was just sick recently. Hopefully she didn't die. That's... Nah, there was... That's all we need. Okay. I probably should have laid it out on the fabric first, but I already have these cut out, so we're just gonna... We're gonna wing it. We're just gonna line it up best we can and wing it. Life is about taking risks, after all. Wait, has, uh, does Temu or Timu, however you pronounce it, do they have fabric? Do they? Hold on a second here. I have to have this heat up anyway. Does Timu have fabric? I don't know. I'm waiting for the answers. Timu's a fat scam. Well, obviously, like I heard that already, but if they have fabric for cheap. I'm, I'm not one to say I'll buy it from there, but I'll... I'll, I may entertain the idea and then quickly, you know, change my, my, and then quickly change my mind because, you know, values and whatnot. Oh, Nevea says they do. Okay, Nevea, we do, if anyone asks, I did not buy anything from there. <laughs> like when I said y'all have to lie for me, this is one of those instances. <laughs> There we go. Sweet. All right, that's one. Let's get the other titty. Breast, breast. Okay. Now, generally, I would just put ladies on top of it, but again, we're just gonna wing it because they're already cut. I pre-cut a lot of these just because, like, this interfacing. Oh, that didn't happen. Nothing happened with that. What happened there? Was it not hot enough? That's so bizarre. Do you have it plugged in? It's plugged in. Like, it's definitely getting hot. I'm not going to touch it with my hand. The way you test an iron is with your tongue, just in case you didn't know that. Put your tongue on an iron. That's not true. That's not true at all. But if you do it, it record it, it's probably going to be funny. It might make you a hit on TikTok. Oh, I didn't steam it. That's why. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. Cute. I mean, again, I'm not going to do too much steam because it might... Ugh, blow the dots off, but we're fine, we're fine. Everything's cool. SMH, SMH said, I am so freaking lucky to live near the fabric store in NYC, but my bank account is not. But there's mood here, plus Spandex House has two huge floors of Spandex. I'm going bankrupt there someday. <gasps> oh, Spandex House, that is a great stop in New York. New York also has a good fashion district. Again, there's a lot of good like budget stores like in Brooklyn and stuff too you can check out. I've heard, I've heard there's some good finds there. It's a lot of digging, but you might find something cool in like the sale rack. Always hit up the sale racks first and see how creative you can get. Cause sometimes you'll find like stretch fabrics and stuff there too, or sequins. Something you could work with. Cause drag is all about sustainability and buildability when it comes to costumes. If you're making them yourself, you shouldn't be breaking the bank. That's foolish. Girl, we ain't making that much money now. Let's not get silly. AB left you a Laughing Shiva Inu sticker for $10. Thank you! Thank you so much! I love Shiba Inus. Papa is currently sleeping behind Ernie at this moment in time. I'm surprised he's not over here laying. He usually likes to be part of the party. Ugh. Do I want to interface these? I don't know if I do. Do y'all think these need interfacing? I don't think they do. Honestly, I think it'll be fine. Again, I'm going to be wearing a corset and body shaper and everything. It's, it's not getting interfacing. We did the breast. We should be fine. I'm not doing it. It's only the boobs that need the shape anyway. Unplug that. Light that in the corner for now. Her steam, that's her in the corner. Okay. I have to find out a more <laughs> efficient way to do this. Like, I have to get one of those tables that just has one of these permanently built in. Now this is our first live, so. Again, 
Don't you dare judge me. All right. Cool. All right. Everything's looking good. Okay, I'd like to see your faves do better, all right? Who else is gonna sew for you? The things I do for you people. All right, so let's part, start piecing it together. At least I can get the top done today and then do the rest off camera because the panty part, we're still working through that. I'm probably just gonna trace around an existing panty and just attach it. Because that's the best way to do it. Okay, let's move some stuff around. I'm also pretty sure I put the sewing machine on the table wrong so I have to reorganize. So it's all good. In the meantime, how y'all doing? How's it going? How was your night? Bonjour, ladies. Okay, so I have to do it that way. That's fine. We can make that work. Oh no, it's just because the plug's over there. So we're fine. Again, y'all know how sewing works. That's fine. Do you have the extension cord right there? I'm <gasps> you. I do! Can you unplug it from over there? And I'll move it over here. Fantastic. That's Wait, brilliant why thinking. Why do you need a unplug for when you can just... Because it's plugged in over there. And then I have to get up. The orange one? Or are you talking about your sewing machine? My sewing machine. Oh. Because then I can move it around. Just toss me that guy. Toss me that guy. Oh, heck, here we go. All right. <sighs> Boop. Pow. Look at that. Okay. Just will knock over your energy drink. Oh, I won't. It's mostly empty anyway because I've been downing energy drinks all day. Ugh. Just for this moment. Okay. Yes, I have the quantum stylist. Don't be jealous. The senpai on Twitch said my edible hasn't kicked in yet. Not yet? No, give it time. Give it time. All right. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna do something that's a big no-no in sewing. I'm gonna swap out the top thread and let it be different because it also matches the other one, so it's fine. And when that runs out, we'll just rerun the bobbin. All good. Don't waste a bobbin. That may have also played a huge part in a why <laughs> I'm making this costume in this color scheme because I already had this bobbin prepared. <laughs> Like I said, I follow historical customers, and those people's sewing spaces are legit, LOL. What's that supposed to mean? Am I not legitimate to you? No, <laughs> take everything as a read. I mean, it's partly true. I just kind of slapdash this together. I normally sew in a different room. But this is a vibe, it's all good. We're making money here. The honeybee asked on Twitch, for a simple dress or this one, how much fabric would you get? Just found some nice fabric on insert secret app we don't mention. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm not gonna lie to you. When it comes to buying fabric, I'm the wrong person to ask because I always overbuy. I always buy at least a yard or two more than I actually need, which means I have to like make other stuff with that fabric. So for this one, I think I probably could get away with probably like three and a half yards. I think that's kind of a safe bet, depending if I want a gown or like a mini dress. This one I probably do is even less because it's just like a top and a panty. And the sleeves are already made because sleeves take up a lot of fabric. So basically what's gonna take up fabric is your gown part, like the skirt and the sleeves. Like the bodice and everything, depending what it is, usually won't take up that much. You can kind of like salvage a lot with stuff and get kind of crafty with it. So yeah, it just depends what you're making. That plays a huge part into it. Well, with this stuff, like I think generally probably like three and a half if I'm doing like, you know, a wiggle dress or something. These sewing clips are a freaking game changer, I'm telling you. Like, I will never go back. I've been converted. It is what it is. I'm just sewing on a straight stretch stitch. Nothing crazy. All right. If I don't read anything from the chat, I'm going on a lunch break. Okay. Ernie's on break. He said, I'm off duty. Okay. That's the... Oh. 
long piece there. First part of the cup done. Now we gotta match that up for the bullet bra. We're doing a bullet bra. I know, shocker. <laughs> but I like them. I'm debating whether or not I'm gonna stuff it or not because I might wear my breastplate with it. I might do a strap or something. We shall see. I've been having a lot of success with the breastplate at brunch lately, so we might bring her back just for that. It's like a select kind of thing. And especially now that I get to actually keep costumes there. Maybe I'm gonna treat that shit like my closet. <laughs> if I get more dates, trust. Oh, trust. Okay, how are we doing? <laughs> Bobby said, have a nice break. A lunch break at 7.30. You don't know our lives. You do not know our lives, okay? I remember back when I used to work at like my regular real jobs, that's why I'd be taking my lunch break, which is technically just dinner. It's like, okay, James, it's eight o'clock, go take your lunch. <laughs> the beauty salon, that's where it would be. Like they have us there from like, I remember like four to like 10 was my shift usually. Like, oh, those shifts sucked. And then taking the bus home in the winter time, ugh. And I always had the habit of getting jobs that were like an hour and 30 minutes away. So I got on the bus an hour and 30 minutes to get back home too. Ugh, I don't miss that. The perils of not knowing how to drive. That's our first titty, our titty, bullet bra. It's looking good. It's looking pretty, pretty sickening. See how that looks like that. Yeah, she's everything. Ooh, ooh. Our bazooms are our weapons. All right, let's do the other one. Thankfully this is stiff fabric so I don't have to line this, so that's nice. That's really nice. Oh, Justin wasn't lying. This stuff is starting to like transfer onto me. Okay, he warned me that the Omnia Prime has a transfer problem, so that's gonna be fun. Glad about that. Now, if you've seen Drag Race Live, you may recognize this neoprene as Coco Montrese's Janet Jackson costume. Because <laughs> her costumer is my gay daughter, and he gave me the rest of the fabric. But if she asks, I don't have it, okay? But that's what happens when you leave stuff at his house. I take it. Let's see. Ricky Lake, yes, Madonna who, yes, okay. I haven't eaten dinner yet. Well, go eat dinner, Loopy. Honeybee, what are you chatting on about? You are going on and on. For the simple dress for this one, okay, I answered that one. Thanks, they have a three yard, a yard cut. Okay, yeah, so probably four yards is pretty safe, I'd say. That's always a safe bet, depending. Like, it depends on what dress size you are, too, and generally the back of it will give you, like, an idea of how much you need. So, like, I'm, like, I run usually in like a, an 18 to a 20, depending, especially with vintage patterns, it's really kind of hard to tell. Usually if it's like a wiggle dress, four yards is a safe bet. When it comes to evening gowns, you might need a bit more. Or like swing dresses or stuff like that, you'll need a lot more. That's when you gotta be like thoughtful about what kind of fabrics you actually can afford. That's when you see like vintage recreations and stuff. The overlay fabric is the thing they spend the most money on. They try and find like the best deal. Everything else can just be cheap, cheap, cheap underneath because the overlay just has to look good. <gasps> Didn't that not sew? Oh, I hate when that happens. Should they drop stitches? That son of a bitch. Okay, let's try that again. I hate when that happens. It never fails. Like eventually you'll meet one fabric that's just like, I'm not gonna sew for you. This is a defiant fabric. So it turns out this neoprene kind of sucks. Yeah, and she's fine. She'll work. I'm not loving it, but it's okay. Oh yeah, also try and cut your like threads while you're doing it. So you don't run into that problem later. <laughs> Where you have like the phantom thread coming out of your costume. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's do the other one. 
right, let's work with this neoprene quick because I have a feeling it's gonna get on my nerves super fast. All right. Hey there from Kansas. Hey, Ty, good to see ya. Thanks for hanging out. Toughest fabric to sew is velvet. Oh, I hate velvet. Oh my God. Yeah, velvet is a worthy adversary. That was like one of the first things I actually started sewing from and like I didn't realize that how tough it was until I got it. It's like, oh shit, what did I do? Why did I do this to myself? What have I done to deserve this? Always start with your needle down. I also need to get a sturdier table because this plastic table is not cutting it. That might also be why I'm experiencing problems. <laughs> la 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 la. La 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 la. Oof, that squeakiness. Oh, I hate that annoying squeaking sound. Ugh. That has to get on people's nerves. People that, things that squeak. All right. All right, that's our second titty cup. Looking good, and again, like, I'm glad I added that stiffness to it because now it actually kind of like holds up right. Well, that's good. It's gonna be great. All right, yeah, it'll work. It's looking pretty nice. Now I get to notch your fabric. If you are doing anything with a curve, you should notch it. I'm saying that because I usually forget to do it, so we're gonna do it here, folks. So notching your fabric so that it actually curves a little bit. There we are, little notches. Do that here as well. And generally the fabric will tell you where the notches should happen. That's like wherever it's puckering is probably where you should put your notch. Cool, all right, notch, 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 notch. Two cups down, let's do our bodice now. The bodice is fun, I enjoy the bodice part. You know what, maybe I will add interfacing. No, I won't. We've come too far. We've come this far, we're not doing it. Let's see. All right, let's hopefully this works out because they are two different kind of fabrics. Like one is vastly thicker than the other. But that's the fun about drag costumes. They can be whatever you want. Your art pop can be anything, okay? Okay? Neoprene gives me pop vibes a little bit. The masks, definitely. It's not my favorite fabric. I kind of got into it because um, Alexa Mateo uses it a lot. Like, she'll make full gowns out of it. And, like, it holds its shape really well. It's a good cheat. All right, let's sew this part first. Let's do that. Let's be smart about this because that's one that moves around a lot. Okay. And you may notice I may, I'm forgetting to backstitch things. That's not intentional, that, that just kind of happens. <laughs> Definitely backstitch if you can, remember. Oh, wow. Wow, oh, what the hell happened here? Look at that. Okay, we are experiencing a problem. Maybe I should have put, maybe I should have interfaced it. We'll figure it out. The fabric got too hot and it broke the thread. Oh yeah, <laughs> look at that. The fabric got way too hot. That'll happen with neoprene. So those of you that do cosplays, I imagine like, this fabric you work quite a bit that must happen all the time if you have a tip let me know let's see i'm going back to an old subject about your interiors for a drag costume my gown oh girl again it's nobody's business the interior of a drag queen's costume okay it's none of your business that would be a real shocking challenge if they were judging the queens on drag race for like the interiors of their gown like is it lined <laughs> 
But I would feel like every queen's horror because none of us line anything. <laughs> Who's got the time to sew it twice? Fuck off. All right, let's see. <laughs> let's try this again. It's like, you must be out of your mind I'm gonna sew this costume twice. Okay, this fabric is particularly sassy, so I might have to go over it a couple of times. So it looks like it dropped stitches in some places. Yes, it did. Look at that drop stitch, son of a bitch. Ugh, I hate neoprene. I don't know why I chose it, but it is what it is. We're here now. All right, that should just cover our tracks. There we go, that covered it. Good, good, good. Yeah, that's the effect we want. Cute, cute eh? We're just add stones to that, like black stones, and it'll look, it'll match. Everything will work out great. Sweet, all right, let's do the other stuff. Where my other pieces go? Where are you, little pieces? All right, we'll just do the neoprene first then. All right, neoprene it is. We grab the little bra cup, and then we just stick it right here, and sew that up. And that'll create the bustier. Bustier. An old-timey kind of brush, an old, old maidenly kind of bra. Maybe the stitching's too tight for the neoprene. I have to just switch it up a little bit. Oh, no, it's working. It was just sewing over those two different fabrics. It wasn't loving it. Oh yeah, it's fine now. We're good. We're good. For all the money I didn't pay for this sewing machine, it better work. All right, what's going on in this chat? Boosty caca, exactly. <laughs> Are you familiar with Rachel Malski from YouTube? I'm not. What is she? Is she a sewer? Thanks for streaming like, streaming like this. It really helps queens like, oh, thank you. You're welcome, honey. Yeah, absolutely. Anything. I try and put it all out there. I'm not cagey about none of this stuff. And I'm like, just find easy patterns. Like, as soon as you learn it, you'll just learn, like, do it over and over again. That's the real trick for drag costumes. Just find like four or five easy patterns that work for you and you can interchange them and make a bunch of shit. Like all this stuff interchanges. A boosty caca. I love that movie. I watched it again. That squeaking noise. It's because I'm not on an even surface. She said, fuck off. <laughs> I'm doing too much. I love when the sewing machine yells at me. They're just like, um, excuse you. What are we doing here? All right. That's so far, so good. Everything's coming out. Everything's coming up, Millhouse. Do, 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 do. Make sure that's right. I'm lining this up properly because sometimes I get it wrong and I'm just like, James, what are you doing? That's it. That's how she's supposed to go. Hopefully y'all can see this, what I'm doing here. Cool. This is the side, the back of the bustier. Very important part, honestly. Okay. Boosty caca. Aw, oh, thanks, honeymoon. Did you know in the olden days, a glimpse of a stocking was looked at as something shocking, but now God knows anything goes. <laughs> how old, how long ago have you been around? <laughs> a glimpse of a stocking. That girl's showing her privates. You can see her ankle. <laughs> it's really incredible. So the stuff people used to take so seriously. Ooh, that is not right. Let's, ooh, good thing I caught that right away. I almost sewed on the wrong side. Y'all didn't say a damn thing. It would have let me do it too. All right, here we go. Thankfully with this, I can get away with that. So let's see. Here. 
But no, me sewing on the wrong side happens quite frequently. So that actually would be like a great example of everyday sewing with me. All right, let's see. But that kind of stuff cracks me up, like the things people found so shocking and jarring back then. Like, especially like the 1950s, like the Betty Page trials and stuff with Irving Claw. Like how tame and innocent a lot of that stuff was, but it was considered like the biggest smut in the world. Or the comic code. Oh my God, the comic code. William Moulton Marston, old crumple bottom. Oh, yes, that's one half done. That's how one side should look. Yeah, so we can lay that out so you can see it. Let's see. Boosty caca, there we are. That's one side, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. All right, let's try and do this other side now. Where are my other pieces? Let's do huh? Her, 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 her. She, she, she. Let's see, do you need a good clown nose check on the Red Nose Factory? Oh, okay, I don't know what that is, but look, I was probably just gonna go to Walgreens and hopefully it's Red Nose Month or something. <laughs> but also in Las Vegas, we're never like one to like be like low on costume shops. I'm sure I could find a clown nose when I need one. <laughs> I'm not too worried about it. What I am trying to find is a balloon pump because like I used to know how to make balloon animals and I embarrassed myself at brunch the other day because like Yara Sophia wanted me to like blow up a balloon animal and I'm so many years removed. Like I tried like stretching it all out and blowing into it and it was, I nearly blew my lungs out. Like it was so hard, I could not do it anymore. But I knew it, I used to be able to make balloon animals. So I gotta like reteach myself. Well, I still know how to make them. It's just, I used to know how to blow them up really fast but my lungs have since, they're not what they used to be. And I don't even smoke, that's crazy. The checker pattern always makes me think of Freddie Mercury. Oh yeah. Here's the thing, I, I don't remember where I got this. It was someplace, like it was a cheap, 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 cheap fabric, like during Halloween time. I think it was on sale at Joanne or something. But yeah, this fabric is everywhere. Like every Halloween costume for like a clown or like sexy leg like, avenue clown has this fabric. So like, I'm not, you know, I'm not breaking new ground with this fabric at all. It's, it's been around, people have seen it. But it's gonna work for a clown costume for brunch and that's all I care about. There they are. There are my other pieces of boosty caca. All right. Let's make sure everything works together. Everyone is looking right. No wrong pieces. All right, boop. Let's see. I dated a professional clown at NYC. He would make me a balloon toys. Oh, that's kind of cute. Wait, what? What? Wait, what? Am I thinking, maybe my, my, I think my mind went the wrong way. I think I took a hard left turn with that one. I'm sure he just made you balloon animals is what you're saying, which is, that's cute. We're gonna keep it that way. You Shakes the Clown Dayton weirdo. <laughs> Was it like Shakes the Clown? <laughs> Were they a drunk clown? One of my favorite movies that I should not have been watching as a kid, but I totally did. And Julie Brown, she had that weird like voice she was putting on. Like her Barbara Walters impersonation she was doing. <laughs> Shakes the Clown. I remember when I worked with Bobcat Goldthwait for AJ and the Queen, Bobcat Goldthwait was the director. And like, I remember he came up to me and introduced himself and like, I already knew who he was because I'm a huge fan. But I was just like, yeah, I love Shakes the Clown. And he was just like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And I was like, don't worry. The criterion will recognize it someday because it is a masterpiece. <laughs> R.I.P. AJ and the Queen, I really liked it. I did too, I loved it. Honestly, it was a really fun show. They should have given it a chance. People are so quick to jump on something and be negative. I think it was a cute show. It had a lot of potential. Okay. Let's 
Etsy. This fabric is so touchy. I'm just trying my hardest to make sure it doesn't like go everywhere. I don't remember it being this touchy when I felt sewed it the first time, but I'm also like years removed. Oh, wait, you better calm down. Okay, it's this fabric that's doing it. It is, the, it's, it's, it's the confetti dots. That's what's happening here. Ooh, girl, you better not play. Don't start. Do not start, bitch. Okay. The sewing machine is trying my life. So it wasn't the neoprene. It's always been the confetti dot. So it's, it bears repeating confetti dot sucks. It's the worst fabric in the world, but you know what? It's gonna give me that instant thing that I need. And that's what I have. <laughs> All right, we're almost there. Whoa, living on a prayer. Okay, let's see. That's there, cute. All right, this is actually working out really well. You can see everything. I'm so proud of myself. Let's see. By the way, clowns scare me. Why? Why are people afraid of clowns? I never understand that. Like, I was never afraid of clowns. Maybe it's because, like, my dad used to volunteer for the Triple I Shrine Circus when they came to town. Like, him and, like, his buddies, they all volunteered and, like, would, like, they always, like, source out local guys and just do clownery. So that was super cool. I got to, like, go backstage to the circus back when I was a little kid and see all that stuff. I got to go to the circus for free, so that was fun. So yeah, like, I don't know, I always like clowns. I think they're fascinating. <laughs> Definitely a dying art. Ooh, that is, that didn't sound good. I think it's getting hot again from the confetti dots. The glue is gumming up. Ooh, if y'all can see what that needle's doing right now, it's like, it was like dropping some sick beats. Oh yeah, I think some, there's a jam. Let's see what's going on here. I have to rip her out. Okay, yeah. Sickening jam happening right now. All right, I'm back. I just read, oh, Ernie needs to clock back in. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I don't know, I just said that. Oh, see y'all some haters. Look at it, I'm plotting my demise over here. We got a jam, and we're so close to being done too, son of a bitch. And that always happens. I think it's the bobbin. Cut the bobbin out. Wait, did a singer send you this machine for free because you broke the other one? Yes, yes they did. They certainly did, <laughs> yeah, that was a big jam. That's all me, that's Confetti Dot. That's not the sewing machine's fault. That's me using bad fabric. I can't even like blame them for that. That is me trying to like force something to happen on a bobbin that was running really low. <laughs> like I said, Alexa, play Jam by Kim Kardashian. <laughs> Thankfully I don't have an Alexa, so I don't have to suffer through that. She had a song? Wait, hold on a second. Kim K had a song? When did that happen? Am I missing something? I know Tyra had a song. Oh, baby, did Tyra have a song and she made everyone on the show be in her video? Tyra had a couple songs, actually, now I think about it. <gasps> you guys remember Model Land? I know I'm, like, digging deep into, like, top model lore, but do you remember Model Land, Tyra's novella? Like, her fantasy novel about models. Please tell me I'm not the only one that remembers this. <laughs> Paris is actually a decent singer. I mean, she had a good song. I never listened to the rest of the album, so I can't speak intelligently on the matter. But yeah, I like Stars Are Blind. That was good. I did hear that one song that her and Haley Duff got in a fight over, and honestly, I don't know what the fight was about because the song, both songs were bad. <laughs> there wasn't a winner in either one of those piles. Okay, that sickening jam sounds like an excellent drag name. Ooh. Wind it up a bobbin. Boy in NYC says Stars Are Blind is a bop. 
Oh my god, that reminds me, when we were at the garden, I was a few drinks in, and then that started playing, and I, everyone in the bar, including myself, was singing that song, and then this uh, one girl turned to me and was like, why do we know this awful song? Oh, <laughs> honey. Here's the thing. Stars Are Blind is not something to be ashamed of, because it's actually a really beautiful song, and produced by Jane Weedlin of the Go-Go's, so like, it had quality people working on that. Like, don't sleep. That song was actually really good. It was a lot better than a lot of people gave it credit for. I think more people are just kind of like trying to be like, what's that word? Snotty about the fact that it was Paris Hilton that made the song. They couldn't get over that fact that she actually did something well. But it's like, you gotta give someone their props when they deserve it. Like, it was a cute song. Y'all sang along to it. Don't play. Don't front. But if I remember correctly at that time when it came out, it was in vogue to be very anti Paris Hilton. So, that checks. Okay, so only a little bit didn't sell. So that's good, right at the end. So that's fine, that's good, that's all I need. All I need is to finish this goddamn top. New Wave NM said, wasn't Model Land going to be an amusement park? Yes! I'm glad I'm not the only one that remembers this. Like, Model Land was a moment. <laughs> it was a thing. And like, I feel like I talk about it with people and they look at me like I'm crazy. So, like, she was all in on this Model Land thing. <laughs> I gotta talk to my friend Allison and Pregler about that because she did a whole like series on Top Model talking about Model Land. <laughs> And it made me feel so, like, sane, because I, I honestly, at a certain point, thought I made it up. Like, I didn't think it actually ever happened. <laughs> but yeah, check out her video, like, top 20 craziest Tyra moments. Oh, we love it. Duke said, L Literacy on YouTube did a whole deep dive on those model land books. Hello, it was wild. <laughs> it was like such a fun, you know, vanity project, like self insert kind of thing. Like, I live for that kind of stuff. Where it's like, clearly the character is you. <laughs> like, it's Tyra. And there's only one Tyra Banks, okay? Senpai, I don't know if you read this one already, but said, Rachel Maxi is this gorgeous redhead, quirky girl who makes very chaotic videos and making her own vintage style clothing. You should check her out sometime. Maybe I have seen her. Well, like, she sometimes pop up in, like, her living room and shit. Like, I think I have seen her, like, here and there. Because whenever I look up vintage sewing, I, like, like, to put it out in the background while I work. Like, there's her. There's another lady who's, like, really awesome. I should find her name, but she does really cool videos, too. Let me see. It's probably my playlist. I'll look in a second. SMH SMH gave you a super chat or $15 on Thank YouTube you. and said, Just realized my bobbin is empty, so I'm taking a second to tip and thank you for hanging with all of us as you stream and sell. Thank you! Oh my god, the empty bobbin, the bane of my existence. Although I will say, one of the most euphoric things in the world is when you're at the very end of your project and you finish sewing and you finish it right at the end of the bobbin. Like the bobbin finishes right where it's supposed to. Girl, euphoric, all right? Honestly, nothing tops it. I guess only people that sew get that. <laughs> Start sewing, you'll feel it, okay? When you're like really involved. Century said, oh girl, have you heard of the sewing garter? It was a lost sewing fab, a garter with a tiny flap that held a tiny sewing kit for a minor stitch function. Sewing garter? That's sickening. I love anything with a garter, honestly, like you're a secret agent. <laughs> garter belts need to come back. Garter flasks. I should have had one of those for drag race. But that's how it's supposed to look when it's all sewn in, so we'll see how far I get. As long as I get the bustier done, I'll feel like I did something, you know? I'll feel like it wasn't a total waste of time. Okay, let me 
Let's try this. Like I said, James loves finishing with the bobbin finishes. <laughs> Literally what I'm saying, y'all. If you sew, if you know, you know, okay? Like it is, you, it is the everything. It's better than sex mascara, okay? If it looks like I'm ignoring y'all and getting really concentrated just for this part because it's actually really involved. <laughs> Because if it buckles, it'll fuck your whole garment up. But I can answer questions if you want to ask something. Camellia1987 asks, Will you ever make your bullet pattern available for download? I buy that. I mean, I have to talk to my gay daughter Justin because that's his pattern. He made it. So that's really up to him if he ever wants to put that on the market. Because he made it for me. So like there's a little bit of, you know, a little bit of love that went into that pattern because they wanted me to have something nice and also put them out of business so I can just make my own clothes. <laughs> Don't tell them I told you that. <laughs> Justin will be like, I'm not starving for business. Right. He's like, I don't need your business, bitch. And then ask me when I can do a commission again. <laughs> The honeybee on Twitch said, it's always either the bobbin, you sewed it inside out, or there's a mysterious red thread hooked to the fabric when you didn't even use red. Okay, here's the thing, like the phantom thread is so real, like, or even more so, my biggest problem is like the thread will hook on the foot, and like you're wondering why the foot is like locking, cause it's like being tied down by a thread that happened like 70 stitches ago. Biggest, like, oh, I hate you moment. That's how it looks installed. Hey, good job. I didn't pucker anything. So that's good. I'm getting good at this, all right? No puckering. That's what we like. Oh, I don't know why I'm tweaking the nipple. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> all right, let's do the other one. <laughs> huh? Michael said... Playing chicken with your bobbin thread and winning is a sexual experience. <laughs> For real though. Girl, I'm telling you. It's like the people that edge the microwave. <laughs> Century said, hey James, have you ever had a dent in your breastplate and what do you do to fix it? Um, I wish I could give you the answer to that. Um, I actually do have a breastplate that has a dent in it. Like when I had the Elias closet one, that one got like a permanent dent in it that I have not been able to get out. Also it discolored, so it's like purple. Like I looked at it recently, because it's at Justin's house, because I gave that to him to like make patterns based off of when I used to do breastplates a lot. Yeah, it just kind of happens. You just kind of got to buy a new one. That's kind of the sad part about it. Like it's reached the end of his lifespan. But the dents are really hard. I wish I knew how to get it out. You have to ask someone that's like experienced with like silicone. Because mm -hmm. I don't know. I am sorry about that. But if it's discolored, I'd say, you know, use makeup, powder makeup. Um, bare Minerals always worked. Back when I worked at Sephora, I'd always just take a bunch of samples of Bare Minerals home and do that to, like, color match it and color it. Because they absorb color, the silicone does. So, like, if it lays against, like, a purple suitcase, which happens to be quite a bit, you'll get, like, a spot of purple on the breast. It's very strange. But they also warn you when you buy it, like, that can happen. Six <laughs> <laughs> and NYC said, How do you edge your microwave? <gasps> you haven't seen those videos? Okay, so edging the microwave is, it's like, you're warming something up, right? And then when everything gets to one, you stop it. <laughs> and then don't let it finish. And I guess if you like really want to be specific about it, you like put 30 minutes, 30 seconds back on. <laughs> that was like a trend on TikTok for a while, like a comedy trend. Oh damn, I asked my microwave. Some of y'all probably did it and didn't realize you were doing it, you gooners. <laughs> Ask her friends 
she uses silicone every day. There you go. Yeah, you have to ask somebody that knows about it. Because generally, like, I don't know. Silicone is a uncharted territory for me. I've only worn it. I have never had to work with it. Wait, what stitch setting are you using? Um, I'm using a stretch straight stitch. And don't ask me about tension or anything like that. Whatever was on the, the machine to begin with. <laughs> I'm horrible at stuff like that. I only focus around like two things. So it's like stretch straight or zigzag. That's honestly all I ever go into. <laughs> I should have Justin next to my show because he could explain that a lot better than I could because he actually went to school for this. I'm all self-taught. I'm going based off of like the one sewing class I had back in college when I went for like a month. All that sewing, all that fashion school going to work right now at my for-profit college, the Art Institutes, which I think is closed now. I don't think they're around in Wisconsin, in Milwaukee anymore. I think they closed. Good riddance. Okay, I, I get it, machine. I love that uh, we both get to say we went somewhere but didn't finish. Like, you're like, I went to fashion design school, didn't graduate, and it shows. <laughs> and with me too, it was like, I went to film school, didn't graduate, and it shows. <laughs> <laughs> Although to be fair, like, I at least learned like some really good essentials when I was like there, like they taught me how to sew. I will say that I had a very good teacher. She was like very insistent that we learn how to actually sew as I sit here and try and yank out thread. <laughs> like she taught me the good basics of it that I've since like remembered and retained most of it. When your Ernie was going to film school, they were teaching you like the very beginnings of it where they had you like recording like running water and shit. Oh yeah, they had me, cause it was an experimental film school program at university. And I was like, here, watch this hour long video of just running water and write a 10 page essay about it. I was like, oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> How about no? How about, I don't have time for that. I just want to be Michael Bay. <laughs> it's like clearly you think I want to be Fellini and nobody wants to be Fellini anymore. We all want to be Michael Bay. We all want to make money. <laughs> the art can come later. B Rex 516 said, I Google tension and width settings. There you go. See, generally you can ask Google because I can guarantee you they're going to know a lot more than I do. Because I'm wrong quite often. <laughs> I'm only here just making pretty things. I never said I was an expert in anything. I never claimed to be an expert. I didn't say it was gonna be a sewing class. I just said I'm getting work done while I talk to you. <laughs> I was doing the thing with my tongue again that people were making fun of me for when I sew and I concentrate. <laughs> The back stitch goes so slow on this. Okay. Dude. Is the boosty caca done? It is, and it, where, oh, what happened here? That didn't sew in right. Okay, well, no, it's not done. <laughs> Clearly I ran out of thread on one side and didn't finish. All right. Okay, whatever. Fine. Back to work. John said, my boyfriend does that with his tongue too. I think it's so cute. <laughs> that, that one comment still haunts me where someone's just like, a kid in my class, you do that when they used to color. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Assholes. Okay, let's see. New Wave and M on Twitch asks, are you familiar with Elix? He is another drag queen on Twitch. No, I'm slowly learning about all the queens on Twitch. I think they're all fascinating. Watch, she's probably in that like, Queens of the Stream thing that I'm a part of that Deer put me in. My friend Deer, who's Canadian, she put me in that whole Queens group. So I'm pretty sure she's probably in that, the Stream Queens. I just have to go and like, be more friendly, I guess. Like, hey skanks, I'm James. Good to meet ya. Smell you later. That kind of warm greeting that I'm known for. Katie wants to know, do you watch any reality TV? No. I wish I did. No, um, no I don't. I don't wish I did. Um, that's a lie. 
I watched a little bit of The Traders when Peppermint was on, but other than that, when she got sent home, I stopped watching. But I was liking Phaedra, although I understand, like, a lot of people don't like her, but she's really entertaining on that show. You don't watch reality TV. <laughs> I don't watch reality TV, so I didn't have context or anything she had done before. Apparently, it's a wild pass, you know, pack a lunch. I don't got time to dive into the multiverse of the housewives. I know BravoCon was here not too long ago, and I'm like, I would be excited, but I don't know anything. The gays here were so hyped for that, and I'm just like, maybe this is what straight people feel like when they hear about DragCon, because like they were talking about these Bravo housewives, and I'm just like, why are you so excited right now? <laughs> like, it's like, I don't know, I don't get that hype or Valerie Bertinelli, I'm sorry. It ain't me. It ain't me, babe. No, 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 it ain't me. Is she a housewife? She, she seems like she would be. She qualifies, right? Lisa Renna could be a housewife. Valerie Bertinelli could. Camellia1987 said, that tongue thing is hereditary. Did one of your parents do it? My kids do it, and it's not from me, LOL. <laughs> As far as you know, watch, well, you'll be sitting there stirring the macaroni and doing it, not even realizing it. I bet. <laughs> I don't think my mom does it, or my dad. I never paid much attention to that, to, like really notice it. Your parents have to be around to notice that. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, let's see. Yeah, there we go. The bustier is looking good. She's looking stunning and sexy. Plus, I, the I am. Is that not the camera right there? Right there. Yeah. The two tone, two side, that and that. Now I just gotta figure out the panties. But the hardest part is done. How long have I been live for? How long did it take me to do a bustier? An hour twenty four. An hour. Girl, oh, a lot of stuff happened. That's not my speed. Okay. Well. Again, usually I can get this done a lot sooner, but it is what it is. At least I got a good start on it, because I gotta like add stones to this too once it's done. But yeah, we just gotta do the panty now, so let's see how that works out. In the meantime, the most complicated part is done. The panty, I literally just traced something. Well, let's recap for everybody that is joined. What happened during this live? Okay, so what ha happened was, is I started off and everything was going good. Like I was cutting things out, I was putting interface on. And then when it came time to cutting out this part of the pattern, it went missing. And by went missing, I mean I misplaced it. Like I put it somewhere smart and then forgot where I put it. Cause I organized. So the takeaway from this is never organize. Just stay messy. Then the sewing machine jammed, Ernie went on a lunch break and we came back and the bustier is done. So look at that. We got a little bullet bra bustier started. I don't know why I keep touching it at the middle part. Why don't you send me your drawing for your idea so I can share it on the Oh, screen. let's do that. Okay, so you guys get an idea of what the idea is. I showed it on the iPad before. Good idea. Okay, let me see. Don't look at my password. Okay. That, and then we share. And then we airdrop the JPEG to okay, the laptop. Said, One of my new favorite reality shows it's called For the Love of Delves. It's about himbos and daddies looking for love. It's hot. Where is that on? Probably out TV. Probably out. That sounds like out TV. It stinks of it. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like an out TV program. All right, let me put on the screen in a second. Sure. Give me a moment, y'all. Yes, he's putting it on the screen right now. Ooh. But eventually we're gonna get to the point where I attach these, but I also have to workshop how I'm going to do that. Wow, oh. it's huge on the screen. Is it? Oh, no, sorry, I have to resize it. Damn! That's like taking the whole screen. James didn't give it to me beforehand, so. It is what it is. Just, sc just scroll it past, that's all I need to see. Oh, there you go, you're resizing, it's looking good. It's all coming together. Again, you know, we're, we're flying by the seat of our pants here. We're learning and growing. We're so, making it all work. Why this? Why this? Yes. Why the, what, the inspiration? Well, the inspiration was, they told me the theme was under the big top or circus. So I thought, let's be a clown. 
because I have a deep personal connection with clowns from my childhood that I wanted to bring out on stage so that people see the artistic merit of my, no, I'm kidding. I literally just had this fabric. <laughs> I had this fabric for previous costumes that I don't like and I wanted to reuse it because I'm cheap. That's what's happening here. That's literally like the, 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 the trueness of it all, the realness that we all desire, the vulnerability we're looking for, you might say. I had this and I wanted to like use it up. I didn't want to spend money on new stuff. So we're gonna figure out how to attach the sleeves, probably off camera because that's involved. But for the most part, she's pretty done. We got the boots VA done on camera and that's, that's cool. I did a lot already. And I actually need to buckle down and concentrate now. So I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me tonight. This was fun. I got some work done and hopefully you picked up something or, you know, just wanted to sell it somebody and, you know, makes the world a little less lonely. Thanks again. Um, I will see you guys next time and I'll probably show off the final result in my next video because I actually have to buckle down and concentrate and finish it. But all I have to do now is just attach the sleeves and make a panty. And a panty's super simple. You literally just trace around an existing panty and sew it together. I also have a video on my channel about how to make up a leotard. So the panty part's actually really easy. It's there. If you're looking for it, it's available. Or, you know, just Google. Google's your friend too. But thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you to my Twitchies. Thank you so much. Any first time chatters, you guys are awesome. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Twitch. We're trying to build her up and I'm trying to overtake a deer so that I can be the first American drag queen to be super, super famous on Twitch and overthrow that Canadian queen. All right, until next time, bye.